First, switch the iPad on by pressing and holding the power button on the top of the device. After a few seconds, the iPad screen will turn on. Swipe the screen, select the language you want to use, and choose your country. Next, the iPad will scan for local Wi-Fi networks. So simply select yours and type in your password. If you don't know it, it should be printed on the bottom of your router. You'll be asked if you want to enable location services. Enabling this will allow your iPad to know where you are so you can get the most out of maps and search results. We'd recommend enabling the service to get the full user experience from your new tablet, but you can choose to do it later in the settings if you want to think about it first. If you have an iPad Air 2, iPad Mini 4 or iPad Pro, you'll be asked to set up Touch ID. Lay your finger on the home button to enable it to read your fingerprint. Once it has a reading, you'll be asked to move your finger to different positions so that the iPad can get a good image of your whole finger. You will also be prompted to enter a passcode. Ensure this is a memorable number as you'll need it often. Just don't make it something that's easily guessable, such as the year of your birth or any numbers in a sequence. Next, you'll be prompted to set up your iPad as a new iPad, restore from an iCloud or iTunes backup, or transfer from an Android device. If this is the first iPad you've owned, then pick Set up as new iPad. If you've previously owned an iPad and want your new device to appear with all the same apps and settings, tap Restore from iCloud or iTunes depending on which method you use to back up your previous iPad. For now, we're going to choose Set up as new iPad. Next, you'll be prompted to create an Apple ID or log in with a previous ID depending on which option you just chose. Type in your username and password if you already have one from say an iPhone, Mac or previous iPad, or if you don't, you'll need to create a new one. You have two choices to create a new account. You can use an existing email address that you already have, or if you don't have one, then you can choose to set up a new iCloud email. You then need to choose a new password and answer some security questions for just in case you lose your password. You will be asked if you want to receive email updates from Apple. We'd always recommend saying no to these requests so that your inbox isn't filled up with unwanted updates. Finally, you'll be asked to agree with the terms and conditions. On this screen, you will be prompted to add a credit or debit card for use on Apple Pay, Apple's payment system that makes purchasing things on your iPad simpler. If you would prefer not to enter any card details until you want to purchase an app, simply tap Set up later in the settings at the bottom of the screen. Now you'll be asked to set up an iCloud keychain. This will record the passwords you use on your favourite sites, so they'll automatically fill in rather than requiring you to type them in every single time. Next, you can choose whether to use Siri, Apple's voice-activated assistant, which can be a handy way to interact with your new iPad. Finally, you need to decide whether you want to allow your iPad to provide diagnostic data to Apple. This data is anonymous and potentially helps Apple make improvements to future software updates to your device, so whether you do is up to you. Your iPad will now be ready to go, and you'll see your home screen with a selection of apps.